Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. We have the pleasure of watching Marius V32 play in his T110E3. And if you haven't played any of the Tier 10 American tanks, then you might be a little confused about what are all these T110s. Well, there's the E3, the E4, and the E5. Now, this is the E3. This tank is, well, it's a tank destroyer, and it doesn't have a turret, unlike the E4. With the E4, the top part of the tank turns 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right, which does add in some flexibility, especially if you do get tracked and a tank tries to surround you. It also means that you can combine turret traverse with your track traverse to quickly re-engage targets to your left and your right. Now, the E3 doesn't really have that option. It struggles unless there's a linear fight directly in front of it. Its track traverse is not terrible, but... It is, is very nearly terrible. It does take a long time to re-engage your targets with this vehicle. And if something does get your side or your rear, your side armor is really bad and pretty bad on the superstructure. This part of the tank is it's an auto pen even with HG ammunition. If they get your back, then you're very likely to get set on fire as well. But if you can keep the enemies in front of you, you have got some of the heaviest armor in the game. There are slight weak points here on the side of the left of the lower plate and the right from the front. And also, there are some viewports here which are flat and quite thin. I very nearly missed Marius's first shot there into the turret of the IS-8 doing 722 damage. And that's because the T-110 in T110. Uh, sorry, the E4 and the E3, the tank destroyer varieties of these tanks, get a 155mm gun with 750 alpha damage and very, very, very impressive penetration characteristics. 295mm of penetration with the standard ammunition and 375mm with the APCR if you're engaging very heavily armored tanks such as the E-100. As we can see, with the angling on the E-100's turret there, and the fact that he's poking himself slightly up slope, the 295 millimeters of penetration were unable to go through his tank. So Marius loads an APCR round. Now we've got 375 millimeters of penetration, which is more than enough to butter the E-100. Now, if you didn't want to fire APCR at E-100, Marius could have targeted the top bar of that tank, which is rather weak indeed. But with 375 millimeters of penetration, with this 155 millimeter gun, you do not even need to hit that top bar. Marius bounces the enemy E100. He probably tried to hit the machine gun port on top and missed and hit the mantlet. Now the T110E3 has got 8 degrees of gun depression. Which allows him to sneak his gun over these slopes. Unlike what a T110E4 can. T110E4 has got less gun depression. And does find it much harder to hide its lower plate. Oh, that one just missed. What a shame. Because that would have been the final shot that he needed to put into the enemy E100. He sees the beak of an IS-3 and shoots it just a little bit too late to hit the tracks. Let's focus up now. Well, we've got some more fighting going on as the T-5041 bounces there. And finally, he manages to connect a shell into the IS-3, dealing 719 damage and taking him out of the game. Now, I should have mentioned that this really is a dream scenario for the T-123. There's no artillery on the enemy team. And finally, Marius connects with the enemy E-100. Because there's no artillery on the enemy team, the E-3 can just hold its ground, use its fantastic armor, and rip apart its opponents, because they're all coming at it from that frontal 45 degrees that you want to be engaged in.
And as he's also hi able to hide his lower plate, well, we can just see the ricochets off his tank here. All off the man. Uh, most of the time, the enemies are trying to aim at the machine gun port at the back. Which I hasten to add, is not actually a weak point on the T110E3. You need to hit to the side of it here, and that's quite a tricky shot to be able to to miss the actual spaced armor over the machine gun port there. Thinking about it, it might not actually be spaced, it might just be extra thick. And you need to hit to the side of it to be able to uh, to go through and do damage. The enemy are quaking in their boots as Marius moves into position and removes pretty much half the health of that M103 with one shot. A nice high roll there for 821. And oh, how the tables have turned here. He is creating an absolute graveyard on this flank. T110 E3 completely outmatches the opponents. And he's even connecting good shots into the top of the M103's turret there. Another high roll on him, 842 damage. That's 1,663 with two shots. The M103 has to be cursing his luck right now. As Marius swings round into position. And aims at the weak point still. Good shot. Right into the lower plate. Off the side, that M103. 7,687 damage done here. An absolute smoking graveyard of heavy tanks. The tier 10 E100 at the back. One tier 9 heavy, a tier 8 heavy, another tier 9 heavy, a tier 9 medium, another tier 9 heavy. And Marius only took one penetrating shot. So his team were very far ahead. But for some reason, this BK4502 just TK'd the Type 59. Looks like he's gone blue. But Marius is hunting them down one by one, securing the kill on the boar sig. So this game looks very safe right now. They're four tanks ahead of the enemy team, including having a T-57 Heavy alive, who is platooned with Marius. He's trying to connect a side shot in there against the Centurion 7-1. He has to be very careful now, and he knows that he's reversing out because... When the T110E3 wants to go somewhere, it, it has to expose the whole of the side of its tank to a flank. A Waffenträger Alf E100 picked up two kills on the KV4 and the, probably the AMX 1390. I didn't quite see who the other gentleman was who died, but got spotted in the process. And so Marius knows where he is. Spots the Waffenträger and puts a good shot into his turret and immediately tries to find cover behind this building. But this is the predicament of the T110E3. If it gets itself into a crossfire with a Centurion 7-1 up on the ridgeline and a Waffenträger Alf E100 90 degrees in the other direction, it makes it very tricky indeed because of the terrible side armor of this tank. Other vehicles can advance quickly, and even if they get shot in the side, it's not such a disaster. However, the T110E3 is a gigantic side profile, and its top speed limit is about 22 or 23 kilometers an hour, I believe. There's nothing that Marius can really do against the Centurion 71, and I feel that he's wasting his time right now, and this is a misplay by him to stop and turn. It's not until the Centurion 71 puts one into his side that he really needs to worry about it. And even then, the Centurion 71 has such a bad rate of fire that he's only going to take one, at most two shots. His priority is should be right now to get up into the corner. From here, 
he can keep the enemies to his front rather than being in what we would call a triangle here where he simply can't advance at one without getting shot in the side by the other. Now the enemies cannot get to his side and he should be able to hold on very well just like he was in the previous position where he was held down. So this is a, a tricky situation. He's against two autoloaders of 5100 and a Waffenträger. The Waffenträger has picked up four kills but luckily he has to jump on the 5100. Now he had an HE shell loaded there probably for the Waffenträger Alpha 100 but he was unable to find him and he tried to put a shot into the back of the 5100. He got a little unlucky there. It went to the left and hit the gentleman in the tracks. Shooting the tracks with HE ammunition is never going to go very well. And even if these HE rounds do have 90 millimeters of penetration, it's unlikely that you're going to be going through the front of a heavy tank, albeit a lightly armored one. He reloads an AP shell, but it's too late, and right now he's getting wrecked in the side by the Waffenträger Alpha 100. He repairs his tracks quickly and turns his armor towards him and bounces a couple of shots. Very tight and needed move there by Marius. If he had continued to get shot in the side by the Waffenträger Alpha 100, that was his certain demise. And the repair kit is just so important in this tank. So it's very likely that the Waffenträger Alpha 100 is reloading now. Luckily, the Waffenträger Alpha Panzerfeuer on his team, the only ally that's left that doesn't seem to be banned, <laughs> manages to spot him. Marius makes his move forward. He wants to try and put pressure on the cap circle, or alternatively, try and put pressure on the enemy tier 10 tank destroyer. Now he angles himself towards the Centurion 7-1 and he decides to reload an AG shell. He's very insistent on shooting the Waffenträger of E100 with an HE shell and it's completely the right thing to do. The Centurion 7-1 is on 220 hit points. If he connects an HE shell with that tank it's, it's quite likely that it's going to still kill him. But the important thing is that the Waffenträger Alpha E100 has 901 hit points left. Now the chances of, of him killing him with one shot with an AP shell with 750 alpha damage, it's, it's negligible. It's probably about a 1 in 10 chance or a, even less to be able to roll that high. However, with an HE shell which has got 90 millimeters of penetration and 1100 damage, his chances are more or less about 8 out of 10 to kill the Waffenträger Alpha E100. And because the turret armor on that tank is so weak, it goes right through. Marius is able to connect the shot in, rolling for 901 out of 1100 and securing the game. And Marcus Mark on the enemy team, the Centurion 7-1, manages to kill the VK4502B, but it's too late for him to be able to interrupt the cap and Marius takes down the game. Marius and his platoon certainly secured this round for his team, picking up 10 kills between them, as you would expect as they were the only tier 10 tanks. And we got to see just how brutal the T110E3 is with Marius picking up 10,600 damage. One thing that's very important to highlight is that if you have a high caliber tier 10 gun, such as on the E3 or the Object 268, do not overlook the HE rounds. They are a fantastic counter to the Waffenträger Alpha E100 and also the new tier 10 British tank destroyer, the FV4005, which has got god-awful turret armor as well. Not only can you almost guarantee shaving off 50% of the health of these tanks, but you'll probably cripple a lot of their modules in the process when you penetrate them and create a highly explosive splash on the inside of their tank. However, let's just take a quick look at the drama that was going on over here. So this Type 59, this T-34 and this Yank Panther are all in a platoon together. They're probably joking around, having a good laugh, all trying to give each other a bit of a push, a bit of a nudge. Not the most productive thing for the team. Definitely not the most productive thing. But they're probably just joking around. 
This VK, however, is not in a platoon with them, doesn't understand what's going on, and decides to shoot the Type 59, saying, Hey, guys, stop messing around. The Type 59 decides to retaliate. And now the obscenities that they're exchanging in the chat are not suitable um, for this YouTube video. The Type 59 clearly tells the VK, He's in my platoon. To which the VK replies, Go fight, idiot. <laughs> the Type 59 is certainly antagonizing this VK as he shoots him in the track once, proceeds to get alongside his tank. Now, unfortunately, the two disappear, and we're going to have to join them later on in the battle. The VK also gives a stern warning to the Type 59, last chance, next time you are dead, six star. Later on in the battle, we find this statue of the VK4502B banned aiming at the back of the Type 59 that he was having a disagreement with earlier. And that must have been the straw that broke the camel's back, as that is his final resting place. Instantly banned as soon as he put the last one in. Ironically, however, while Marius is finishing off the game in a tense duel with the Waffenträger Alf E100, the Centurion 7-1, who currently has four kills, is finishing off the AFK BK. 4502B. Maybe he didn't realize that he had been banned because of his TK, but it's quite likely that he did. And do you know what? Iron Star, uh, the O and the R are the wrong way around there, mate. Through getting yourself banned, you actually probably distracted the Centurion 7 1 long enough to allow Marius to win the game. So, Marius, I think that you owe Iron Star a big thank you. Yep, killing the entirety of a Type 59 is a very quick way to get removed from the game. But I digress, let's not let that distract us from what's important, and that is Maris' fantastic round here. 118,000 credits, 4,634 experience for his double. He got an Invader, a Spartan, high caliber, cool headed steel wall, and the Top Gun. And congratulations to you, Marius, on your first mark of excellence on the tank. To be able to do so, you've got 10. 1,600 damage, receiving 23 hits, 9,250 potential damage. And that's unsurprising considering just how good the frontal armor is on the T123, allowing you to pick your opponents apart, and if there's no artillery, very likely take no damage in doing so. Even though Marius did fire a few dirty APCR rounds, he still made a cool 40k profit. Thank you very much, Marius, for sending me this replay. I'm still searching for my mastery badge in this tank, and I can see why it's so tricky to get with people like you dominating rounds in it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments what you think about the T123 compared to the T124. Do you have both of them? If so, which is your favorite and why? And do you see the T123 as a serious threat on the battlefield? Or do you maybe see them as an opportunity to get around and chew up their 2,000 hit points? Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.